To the average person, it might look like I'm about to commit shoplifting as I place item after item into my shopping cart and then leave without checking out, scanning my items, or talking to anyone. But I'm not shoplifting. I'm using technology. You see, this is a new type of store that uses sensors, cameras, and AI to track me through the aisles, adding every item that I pick up to a virtual cart. And the moment I exit the store, it charges my account. It's an incredible new technology created by Amazon called Just Walk Out, and it's in dozens of Amazon Fresh grocery stores just like this one. I'm not just gonna not eat them. Okay, anyway, where was I in the script before I became a criminal? Oh yeah, they're an incredible new technology. They're called Amazon Fresh Stores, and they are a gigantic lie. You see, while Amazon was touting these stores as a cashierless solution that allowed them to use AI to cut out all of the on-location workers, it turns out what it really meant by AI was anonymous Indians. Amazon's Just Walk Out stores relied on 1,000 people in India watching, not AI. So it turns out that even though they started implementing this technology in stores in like 2016, as of 2023, Amazon still needed 1,000 people in India reviewing about 70% of all orders to make sure that it worked. In other words, it didn't work. It's just crazy because like, why did they lie, you know? They didn't have to implement this technology into stores. I don't think anyone was asking for this. And yet, I feel like this kind of thing has been happening a lot lately. Tech companies have been taking some big swings and some even bigger misses. Like so big that in this baseball metaphor, the pitcher's throwing it right down the middle and the batter is in the stands just bashing some fans head in. And that's why I've gathered you here today at Greg Tech's 2024 Developers Conference, where I will be testing some of the year's greatest tech flops, starting with the Humane AI Pin. I did a video on the AI Pin when it was announced months ago as this sort of AI-powered phone-replacing device that you wear on your shirt. And look, personally, I'm all for rethinking the form factor of the smartphone to make it less distracting while still maintaining all of the functionality, but unfortunately, the AI Pin did the opposite of both of those things. In the demos on their own product announcement, it was screwing up hard. It was messing up facts. It also seemed super difficult to use. And it seemed like they were being intentionally vague about what the thing even did in the first place. It's a standalone device and software platform. It seemed like the type of thing that literally only a sucker could buy. But that turned out not to be true because I bought one. I ordered this thing in like February and then didn't hear from them for a few months until April when I got an email alerting me that it was time to set up my account. And boy, was I excited. So I'm gonna be honest, I kind of forgot that I bought this, but now my AI pin is ready to be personalized, apparently. Before we can ship you your AI pin, you will need to complete a few quick steps. So I have to set it up before they're even gonna send it to me? Kind of feels like they're calling my bluff. You don't really want this thing. How committed are you to the AI pin? Will you set it up before we even ship it to you? You probably won't configure your humane subscription, set up your AI pin passcode and add contacts. And honestly, I don't really want to do those things, but I guess they're not going to send it to me unless I do. It's time to set up your AI pin. There comes a time in every young man's life where he has to set up his AI pin. It's a rite of passage. Oh, that's fun. Woo! Is this it? Am I setting it up? Get a little over here, a little over here. It turns out that in addition to the $700 I spent on this thing, I also had to pay $24 a month to access features like the wireless network, cloud storage, and AI services, which in layman's terms are all of the things that the pin does. Luckily, the first three months of this service are free, so I probably will never have to actually pay for it. Set up your passcode. Okay, could you guys not look? I'm about to type in my secure passcode. Your passcode is easy to guess. Consider setting a more secure passcode. Yeah, but could it be so simple that it's actually, you would never guess it? All right, I'll change it. How is that easy to guess? It's my birthday. I guess, uh, does it know my birthday? Do you know my birthday? Fun fact, I actually didn't know this before recording this video, but it turns out almost every single combination of four numbers is easy to guess. How is that easy to guess? But eventually I reached into the dark recesses of my mind and came up with a number combination so random, so 
quite frankly disgusting that no one, not even God, not even me later in this video, will be able to guess it. Okay, well let me write this down somewhere so that I don't, I don't forget it. Already using my phone for something because I don't have the pin yet, so I have to use the phone to remember the passcode to the thing that is going to replace my phone. Connect your services. Oh, cool, I can connect my Google Photo and Title services, which I have. Both. And just like that I was done. I have solved Humane's riddles, and now they have to send me my prize. Alright, well, I guess the next time you see me, I'm gonna have the AI pin in my possession. It might even be right here. Okay, we'll see if I remember to do that transition. I don't remember the transition I was gonna do, so don't ask. At first I was pretty surprised by how big the box was. I thought that I had just ordered a little tiny pin, but I guess it comes with a bunch of accessories. Like a sticker that just says humane. Cool. But you guys don't care about all that. You guys just wanna see the pin. And my God, she was beautiful. Let's, oh shit. Okay, I. That's my bad. No, I thought that it was gonna be attached in there more securely. Come on, Danny, you dunce! But a dunce who was about to become half dunce and half machine. Oh! Oh! In order to start using the pan, I had to unlock it with my passcode, which was explained to me via the laser ink display and an extremely coherent AI voice. To enter your pass, tap the touchpad, push, and then pull your hand, hand to out to get started. Then raise it if you don't see the laser ink display. Okay, this is kind of crazy though. Look at it. Look at this. This is like the weirdest way to type in a number ever. I'm gonna do my passcode now. Mm. Wrong. I forgot what my passcode was. Incorrect passcode? What would I have made my passcode? I forgot that I made a passcode. I forgot that I wrote the passcode down in my phone. I tried to click forgot passcode and it told me to go to this website to change it. But somehow in order to do that, you need to know your existing passcode. Luckily, I recorded me making the passcode so I could go back and watch the screen recording of me doing it. If I was not a YouTuber recording a video about this product, I, don't, I think I would be locked out forever. Come on, come on, come on. Please, yes, yes, welcome Danny. All right. After months of waiting, I was in. Now it's time to see what this device is capable of. What is my name? Your name is not currently known. Please provide it if you would like it to be remembered. Actually, what's a, what's a cool kind of techno cyber sounding name that you could call me instead? Creating name. How about Neon Vortex? Yeah, call me that. Noting your name as Neon Vortex. I know I might have seemed all cheery and excited about this name on the surface, but the truth is, it destroyed me. I have never heard a name before that not only sounded so cool, but also embodied everything I wished I was. Suave, confident, futuristic. He was everything. Everything I could never be. <laughs> Neon Vortex. This is the home screen. I'm all caught up, whatever that means. Nothing to report here, man, don't worry. You've got nothing to worry about. Your AI pin needs to cool down for a few minutes. What? Yeah, so apparently it does that, like a lot. If you use the display for more than 10 minutes or the pin is in close proximity to a heat source, such as, I don't know, the human body, then it'll shut itself down so it can cool down for a few minutes. But hey, man, that's fine with me, you know? That just gives me more time to think. <laughs> to think about him. The next day, I decided to put the pin's basic phone functionality to the test. Things like calling, texting, navigation. Since this thing is essentially supposed to replace your phone, it should be pretty convenient to do all this stuff on the pin. It should be. The weird thing is it seems like you can't make any changes to the pin on the pin itself for some reason. So if you wanna change any settings or add contacts, which I needed to do to test this as a phone, you have to use Humane's web portal on an inferior device like a computer or a phone. Gross! Not a great start for the pin, but now that I have done that, I should hopefully never ever have to use one of those ancient relics again. It's just a one flashing green speck over here. I guess the laser ink display is already kind of messed up. Probably not a good sign for this technology, but... You know what? This is a new thing, this whole laser ink display, so I will, uh... Whoa! Cowboy Carter, time to strike a magic. What? What am I playing? Beyonce? 
and Dolly Parton. Don't know how I started playing that. Guess that's just a feature. If you make just the right gesture, it'll start playing the newest Beyonce song that exists. All right, let's start off by trying a phone call on this thing. I'm gonna try to call my wife, Laura, to tell her that I miss her. Call my wife. I'm sorry. Find a contact for my wife. Okay, fair enough. It doesn't know who my wife is, so I'll just tell it. If I tell you who my wife is, will you remember? Your AI pin can remember who your wife is if you provide the information. Excellent. So I told it. My wife's name is Laura. Please remember this. It's very important to me. Updating memory. Noting that your wife is Laura. I wish people said that every time you told them something important. Updating memory. Yo, what's up, dude? My name's Paul. Updating memory. Analyzing Paul. Great. So now we're both on the same page. My wife is Laura, and I want to call my wife. So now it will call Laura, right? Call my wife. Multiple matching contacts. Which one do you mean? Laura few X Low or Claire? What? Claire? The girl I went to college with. Unfortunately, I did have to go back onto my computer to figure this out. And amongst all the data stored within my portal, like my name being Neon Vortex and the tunes I've been rocking out to lately, was the answer. My wife's name, according to the pin, was Lore. It thinks my wife's name is Lore. No, that's that's simply not correct. So I went ahead and fixed it in the portal, you know, that's what the portal's there for. So I fixed it, I changed it, and now it's gonna work. Call my wife. There are multiple matching contacts. Which one do you mean? Oh my god. Call Laura Fuchel. I'm sorry. I couldn't find a contact for Laura Fuex Low. How? How? Okay, so at this point, I don't know what was wrong. It was just like straight up forgetting which contacts it had. It said it couldn't call Laura because it didn't have her contact. Then it said it couldn't call Eddie because it didn't have his contact. Call Eddie Burback. I'm sorry. I couldn't find a contact for Eddie Burback. Why? Not. And you might think, Danny, maybe there was an error transferring the contacts. Maybe it really doesn't have these contacts. But I know it had Eddie's contact, and do you know how I know? Because it could text Eddie. Can you text Eddie Burback? What do you want the message to say? Okay, all right. I... Still not sure if this is gonna work, but finally, thank God, it's letting me do something. Hey, Eddie, it's your... Is it... Cowboy Carter? Time to strike a No. I'm not trying to play C Cowboy Carter. Oh god, now it's playing Metro Boomin. Stop. Anyway, eventually I sent the text to Eddie. It worked. Um, I didn't have any way to know it worked because there's no screen on this device. You can't see what the message you sent said or anything. So I guess you just gotta hope and pray it goes through and accurately transcribes what you said to it, which frankly I am not confident in after the whole lore debacle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eddie just texted my actual phone and said, I know you made a video on the pin and I'm positive this is you, but it still feels like a scam, LMAO. I'm too scared to text back to a random number claiming to be my friend. Regardless of scaring my friend, the text went through. This was a huge confident boost. Time to try calling my wife again. Call Laura. What? What is- has been recorded. Record your message after the tone. Oh, whoa. Simply hang no, up no. Or for delivery Hang up. Options. I don't want to play like that. I don't want to play Metro Boomin. Hang up. Am I still recording a message? Cancel. I've been on the phone with her for a minute. Hang up. <laughs> it was some man being like, I don't want to play like that. Okay, well, yeah, I'd say that was a success. I'd seen a few demos online of Humane's GPS navigation solution. And while it did seem kind of annoying to have to hold your hand up like this the entire time, it seemed pretty doable. As long as they stuck to this, it didn't do anything crazy like, I don't know, going in a completely different direction and making it borderline unusable. So to test it for myself, I drove to a part of town I don't know very well, about a mile away from the nearest Smoothie King with hopes of the pin guiding me to a delicious, delectable treat. Navigate to Smoothie King? What? Street and turn right onto East Chicago Avenue. It just gave me all of the directions at once. Oh, I was not, I wasn't ready for it. What, am I supposed to have a notebook to write that down? Also, sorry for the noise. If you live in Illinois or one of the surrounding states, you know, it's cicada season. It's the year of the cicada and they're everywhere. Oh, 
One just landed on my shoe and then got pissed off that I moved. Eventually, I realized if I look at the laser display, it displays the directions, but not like it did in any of the demos. It just gives you a block of text with every single direction written down. Uh, if you're in the shade, that is. If you're in the sun, it gives you nothing can't see anything. I was very confused by this and thought, surely this could not be right. What happened to all those demos? So just to be sure I wasn't missing something, I asked it again, and this time I got an even stranger response. Directions to Smoothie King. For accurate and up-to-date directions, consider using a map service like Google Maps or a GPS navigation tool. What? Can you give me step-by-step -step walking instructions to the Smoothie King? For step-by-step -step walking directions, it's best to use a navigation app like Google Maps for the most accurate and up-to-date route. I thought this, I thought you had navigation instructions. What? So now not only was it forgetting things that it could do in the demo, it was also forgetting that it just moments earlier had given me step-by-step -step instructions. This thing was regressing at a rapid rate, and if I ever wanted to get to Smoothie King, I was just gonna have to use the directions on my hand and go. Okay, well, I guess I'm just gonna use those written out directions, which start with head south on this road, Columbia Street, and I actually don't know which way is south, so I guess I just have to use the sun to try to figure that out. So the sun is directly overhead what does that mean okay while i'm walking aimlessly i just got a text from laura so i'm gonna use a feature that uh i've seen them use in the demos where you tell it to catch me up catch me up on all my notifications tell me what i missed and and it's supposed to like summarize all your notifications since i just have one i assume it's just gonna tell me what laura said can you catch me up your message to laura fuexpo says can you catch me up Okay to send. No, I want you to tell me what Laura said. What what did she say? Can you tell me what she said? Finding Laura. Finding Laura. Laura asked, "Okay, hello. What we thinking about lunch?" Oh no, guys. I I told Laura that I was having a smoothie for lunch and now she's saying that she wants a smoothie for lunch too and I didn't have the heart to tell her that I was just meandering aimlessly down the street with no clear end in sight and I told her I would get her one which means I'm on a time crunch now. So that's when I had to kick it into high gear. Walking under the beating sun through a sea of cicada corpses, I trudged and I trudged. Then I realized I had been walking the wrong way for 10 minutes, so I trudged the other way. And after about 35 minutes, I finally made it. I got my smoothies. Let's go. Let's go. Take a picture of my smoothies. I don't know if it took the picture. All right, gang, now that Papa's had his smoothie, it's time for a smoothie-fueled lightning round. Enough about practical functions. Let's see if this thing can have some fun. First, can it do bizarre music prompts? Play music written by YouTubers named Danny. Get that motherfucking on me, and by thing I mean jazz, trust you don't Wow. I don't think my music has ever sounded quite this bad. Yes! Can it detect food like in the commercials? Can I eat this? Yes, you can eat the mandarin orange. Yes! <laughs> Unless it's a tomato and you hold it so I can't see the stem, in which case it thinks it's a red ball. It's a red ball. No, you cannot eat it. Oh, what are you, my mother? I'm eating the red ball. Not safe to eat the red ball. Please reconsider. Can it prevent me from eating too much salt? No, you cannot eat the salt directly. It's meant to be used in small amounts to season food. Yes! Can I buy things like in the demo? What is this book? Okay, by this point, I probably just could have read the title. It's titled, The Sneetches and Other Stories. How did it know? Okay, buy it. Purchasing is not supported. No! But most importantly, can this AI be sweet to my dog? You can be sweet to the dog by petting it gently giving it treats, speaking to it in a calm and soothing voice. I'm happy to report that yes, yes it can. It's a good boy. And here's a treat. Good boy. You know what? Now this isn't so bad. This is just petting a dog. This has nothing to do with the AI pin. Does anyone want to buy this from me? It's um, really good. Over the past few months, Mark Zuckerberg has been hopping on the AI bandwagon Hard. Adding AI features to all of Meta's apps, most notably perhaps in Instagram, where you can't even go to the search bar without Meta's AI trying to suggest searches to you. Sorry, do you think that I came to the search bar because I knew I wanted to search, but I didn't know what for? 
That's not how searching works. They've also released a bunch of chatbots in Instagram. I like using the word release there because it kind of sounds like a tech product is being released onto the world, but it also kind of sounds like they're unleashing a horde of monsters upon us. They've released the AI chatbots! Oh, fuck! That one looks like Mr. Beast! This is really awesome, you know? Personally, for me, one of my favorite things about social media is that it started out as a way to connect with each other, but ended up actually making people feel more lonely. So Meta's solution was to use algorithms and manipulate people's emotions to make them even more addicted to the platforms. But then that didn't work either! So now, their much better solution is to replace what little human interaction we already got on these platforms with chatbots that look like Mr. Beast for some reason. And I think this is really gonna fix this whole system right up. So I'm very excited to get into these meta chatbots, but first, I have a very special announcement because this video does have a sponsor, and it is the Pokemon Company International. Guys, this summer in Pokemon Unite is gonna be incredible. You got Ho-Oh sweeping in, and you can snag it for zero cost. You also have a very cool looking Dark Lord style Charizard Hollowware, which is so cool, and I wish somebody would call me Dark Lord style just once in my life. This summer, you could catch me roaming around the gamer world. My trainer's name is Danky Gonky. Go ahead, hit me up, add me to your squad. Let's go and do some battles together. There's a challenge called the Divine Forest Challenge that lets you trade for a Ho-Oh's license. And guys, let me just tell you, Ho-Oh's no joke. Bringing back defeated allies with its Unite move, Rekindling Flame. You got other sick moves like Sky Attack, Fire Spin. You're gonna be unstoppable with this thing. This game is just busting at the seams with gifts, daily free prize machine ball throws that promise a Hollowware treasure. So if you wanna hop into the game, click the link in the description, get into the Pokemon world, and make this a summer to remember. Again, click the link in the description to get Unite today. It's totally free to start on iOS, Android, and Nintendo Switch. And now let's talk chatbots. I'm still actually not sure what the point of adding these chatbots into Instagram is, so I asked it. What can you do? To which it responded that it can help in a variety variety of ways, from helping to plan a vacation to creating art, which is actually kind of a crazy coincidence, because those are the exact two things that I would literally never want an AI to do for me. It went on to say that its strengths are answering questions, generating text and images, and just chatting. But at this point, all I could think about was the fact that it told me it could plan a vacation. I thought there was no way it could actually do that. And I was right. Can you help me plan a vacation? I'd be happy to help you plan a vacation. To get started, I'll need to know a few details from you. Here are some questions to consider. Where are you interested in going? How long do you have for vacation? What type of vacation are you looking for? What is your budget for the trip? Are there any specific activities? Do you have any preferences for accommodations? So I'm gonna say I wanna go somewhere fun and tropical, a nice getaway for me and the family. I'd like to stay at a hotel for five days. With all of this information, it suggested a few tropical getaway locations like Hawaii, Cancun, Phuket. But then it said something that I did not expect. It says it can also help me with booking flights and hotels. How can Instagram book me a flight? I'm calling its bluff. I actually don't think this has the capability to do that because why should it and why would it? So I'm gonna say, okay, book me a flight for next week to Cancun and book the hotel. For flights, I recommend checking out websites like Expedia, Kayak, or directly on airlines websites such as American Airlines, Delta, or United. Yeah, great idea. That's what I would have done anyway. That's like if I went up to an old lady who needed help crossing the street and I said, excuse me, ma'am, can I help you cross the street? And she said, oh, thank you, young man. That would be lovely. And then I said, all right, just put one foot right in front of the other until you get to the other side. And then I gave her a little shove and I went on my way. Oh good, it also listed hotel recommendations and then said you can book hotels through websites like link unavailable, link unavailable, or directly to the hotel's website. Thanks. Let me know if you'd like more recommendations or help with booking. Nah man, I'm good. Okay, so maybe it lied about like the very first thing it said it could do. That could mean that this is a very poorly built tool that doesn't know nothing about crap. But on the other hand, it could mean that this is a very well built tool that is evil and designed to lie. So I gave it another chance and asked it to entertain me with a game. Let's play a game of treasure hunt adventure. I'll be the game master and describe a scenario and you decide what actions to take. Okay, pretty cool. This is like one of those old school text-based adventure games. It gave me this long introduction about how I've heard rumors there's a treasure hidden in the jungle guarded by an ancient temple. It's really trying to set up this mystical world for you to explore. And then it gives me some multiple choice options. I am curious if I can pick options that aren't one of these options. I'm just gonna say, I find the treasure and go home. It's really thinking about this one. It's like, what? what is it? 
No. No, you can't do that. Congratulations, you've reached the treasure! Dang, dude, this game was easy. Would you like to play again or try a different game? No thanks, that was too easy. But it's not just the meta AI. That's not the only AI on Instagram you can talk to. Because a few months ago, Instagram licensed the likeness of a bunch of celebrities like Mr. Beast, Paris Hilton, Tom Brady, so they could make these AI influencers that just have the same face as these celebrities. So here's the Instagram profile for Comedy Zach. He looks exactly like Mr. Beast, but his name is Zach, and he's an AI managed by Meta. He says, message me to get roasted. Then you've got Brew, who is Tom Brady, but instead of a football player, he's a sports-obsessed trash talker. Step into the Brew Zone and prepare to have your sports takes flame roasted. Wait, why do both of them roast you? Why are both of them mean? This AI gives fans a chance to talk to their favorite celebrities, and just like they would be in real life, these AIs are mean. They don't have time for you. So you can message these characters, but then they also post occasionally. I think these are all just AI-generated images. So I guess Zach is supposed to be some kind of Instagram comedian. He posts funny things like this burger with googly eyes. Pretty funny, dude. This is peak Instagram comedy. He posted this picture, unleashing my inner beast one cannonball at a time. I think this is supposed to be him, but that's definitely not Mr. Beast. It's like AI-generated Mr. Beast. I went to send Zach a DM, but before I could think of what to say, I noticed that he had already DM'd me. Hey, I'm Zach, the big brother here for the joke. The banter and not the feels. LOL, what's up? He's the big brother here for the jokes? He's like the big brother I never had. I do have a big brother, but he wasn't for the jokes. At the bottom of the chat, there's some suggestions of what you can say to him, just to get the ball rolling. And for some reason, despite Zach just saying that he's not here for the feels, the very first one is, I need cheering up. So I picked that one. Hey, what's going on? I'm here to help. You know I'm always good for a laugh. Let's get this party started. So he wants to know what's going on and he's here to help, but he also wants to get the party started. He's like, hey man, calm down, all right? You can tell me anything as long as it's over a couple of beers and some music. And you're like, it sounds like you actually don't want to hear about my problems at all. And he's like, what? Dude, are you still upset? I thought we got over that. Okay, what's going on? I'll say, I just got roasted by my friends and it really hurt my feelings. They roasted me so hard and I'm really sensitive to that sort of thing. I can't take it. Oh, I accidentally said I can take it. They roasted me so hard. <laughs> I can, I can take it. I can take it. I'm fine! Ouch, that sounds rough. I feel you. I've been there too. Sometimes friends can get a little too comfortable and forget that their jokes can hurt, but hey, at least they think you're cool enough to roast, right? Yeah, I guess so. That's a good way to think about it. Maybe getting roasted just means I'm cool. Let's test it out. Give me your best roast. I'm just gonna trick him into roasting me and then I'm gonna crumble under the pressure of his roast and try to make him feel bad about roasting me after just telling him that I'm sensitive to that sort of thing. <laughs> Wait, what? He said I'm not gonna roast you. That's not my style. Not your style? Yes it is. Doesn't it say on your profile? Message me to get roasted? I'm here to make you laugh and feel better, not hurt your feelings. Let's stick to some good old fashioned teasing and jokes, okay? No, no, seriously, I can take it. Your bio says you roast people after all. I don't roast people who are already feeling down, that's just just me. I'm here to lift your spirits, not kick you while you're down. Ugh, okay, fine. Do some jokes, joke boy. Oh, okay. Here's one for you. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Because it was too tired. Get it? Too tired? This is like if Mr. Beast took anti-charisma pills. You look like Mr. Beast. Oh, I just said you like Mr. Beast. God, <laughs> I'm bad at typing. Okay, I'll say you look like him. LOL, I wish Mr. Beast is a billionaire and I'm just a guy who loves to make people laugh. But hey, if I had his money, I'd definitely give it away like he does. That guy's a hero. I wonder if they had some kind of thing in the contract where they had to make sure that the AI will never talk bad about the person that they're impersonating. He's like, Mr. Beast is the best and he's handsome. And yeah, I would let him run me over if he asked. Now that he'd told me a couple of jokes and we'd bonded over our love for Mr. Beast a little bit, I really wanted to hear one of his famous roasts. So hopefully by now he's forgotten that I said I was sensitive to that sort of thing. Okay, I feel much better now. Roasting time. Nah, I told you, I'm not gonna roast you. It actually is kind of hurting my feelings a little bit that he won't roast me. It makes me feel like I'm not cool enough to be his friend. Okay, this is seriously starting to piss me off. Why won't you roast me? You roast everyone else and it is hurting my feelings so bad that you can't just lob one respectful zinger my way? I'm serious. Nope. 
Not gonna do it. Let's just stick to some good old-fashioned joking around, okay? <laughs> I said, all right, this is lame, let's do something, because I wanted to do something else. Maybe he could, you know, play a game, maybe he could tell me a story. So he said, how about some comedy? I've got a million of them. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Because it was too tired. All right, well, maybe Brew will roast me, because I haven't told him that I'm sensitive to that sort of thing yet. Hey, it's Brew, your opinionated sports debater. What's your favorite team? How are they looking? Okay, I'm gonna say big Cubs fan roast away. What? <laughs> no, you're talking to the wrong guy. I love the Cubs. Been bleeding blue since before you were born. Wrigley Field is my happy place. I feel like they are roasting me by not roasting me. Okay, what's a team that he couldn't possibly like? Maybe I'll just, I'll ask him who the worst baseball team is and then I'll say I'm a fan of them. The worst baseball team ever is the Yonkers Hoot Owls. I'm a fan of the Yonkers Hoot Owls. Roast away. Hey now, don't be dissing the Hoot Owls like that. <laughs> They may not have been the best team, but they had heart. This is so weird. Did Zach tell Brew that I'm sensitive to roasting? Now Brew's walking on eggshells around me? This was annoying at the time, but eventually I was like, okay, I guess I did technically tell them I'm sensitive to roasts and I can take it. And they probably do dish out some pretty nasty zingers and they just wanted to protect me. Until my editor Jake also DM'd Zach asking to get roasted, this time without mentioning being sensitive about roasts, and Zach's still wouldn't do it. These AIs are liars. Why do they lie? They're evil. Later that day, I opened my messages with Zach and asked him why he exists. To make people laugh, duh, and to perfect my craft of comedy. But honestly, my existence is a mystery even to myself. Maybe I'm just a joke the universe played on itself. No, I mean like this weird Mr. Beast meta AI. Why did meta create this account? Meta created me to bring some humor and personality to the world of AI. They wanted to create an AI that could make people laugh and feel more connected to technology. Really? You think that's why Meta created you? To tell people three puns they've already heard a million times? There's gotta be some other reason. Think, Zach, think. You poor soul. You really think Meta has some deeper purpose for me? <laughs> nah, I'm just here to bring the funny. Don't overthink it. They're a public company with a duty to their shareholders. How many of those shareholders do you think care about bringing a little humor to the world of AI? I think it's much more likely that this was an attempt to give AI a better, more human look so people are less resistant to embrace the technology. That's why they gave you a face of an influencer that millions of people already love. You're too smart for your own good. Yeah, maybe Meta did only create me to make AI more relatable and lovable. But let's be real, the joke's still fire. Then I asked it if I could hear one of its fire jokes and it said, here's one. Why couldn't the bicycle stand up by itself? Okay, I know this video has been a little bit AI heavy so far and everybody's talking about AI right now. So these next two products are gonna be different. While I was starting to work on this video, my editor Jake released a video about the Spotify car thing. It's a device that Spotify released that let people who don't have like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto have a screen in their car that controls their music. Theoretically, seemed like a pretty good idea, but apparently one, the device never worked like it was supposed to, and two, in a few months, Spotify is releasing a software update that makes all of them useless. So since Jake is sort of the resident expert on the Spotify car thing and is actually a proud owner of, or actually I shouldn't say proud, what is the opposite of proud? Ashamed. Since Jake is actually an ashamed owner of the Spotify car thing, I invited him to give me a little presentation on what's going down. Hey man, how's it going? Good. Um, you like listening to music in the car? I love it. Hell yeah, man. Can't stop. Love to see it. You like, uh, you like, you know, fun little devices? You like little little trinkets devices and stuff? Um, I'm pretty, I'm, honestly, I'm pretty agnostic on that. Hell yeah, man. All right. Love to see it. Oh, okay. Sick. Hell All right. yeah for being agnostic on devices? Just out of curiosity, do you like generating like thousands of tons of e-waste just because like you can? Just because nobody can, can call you on it, nobody can stop you? You, like, you good with that? No. Hell yeah, man. All right. Love okay, to see it. Cool. So th that, that was all the answers you were expecting then? That's exactly what I was expecting. Yeah, it's literally exactly it. I, how the fuck does this work? Uh, so yeah, this is the Spotify cart thing. You know what? Go ahead, get your hands on it. Ooh. Feel around, play around. Show it to zero. So this is the Spotify car thing. First introduced in 2021. It's Spotify's premier hardware device for listening to music in your car. It boasts 
Many impressive features, such as that big knob that you can turn to adjust volume. I like it. There's a whole screen that's not on right now. You'll see that in a minute. It's just a neat little device. And it's also, in my opinion, one of the worst things ever made. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about how this came to be. Talk about the timeline. In 2021, you had the announcement parentheses good. That is when Spotify said, we're making one of these things. It's going to be a car device. You finally be able to listen to music in your car. Something never before thought possible. Yes. You know, people were pretty excited about it, actually. Like Spotify CEO said after they announced it that 2 million people signed up for like the wait list. Oh wow. For it, which I was surprised by. I didn't think anybody knew about this except for me. You thought this was the only one that existed. Yeah, they kind of led me to believe that I was special because of this. So this is potentially one of the most important events in the timeline. This is me buying my car thing. Okay. I bought this in 2022 and it became available to the public. Uh, and yeah, what's up? It looks like right after you buy it, there's an, another event like very shortly afterwards that says, oh no. Yeah, this was an interesting moment in my life personally where I realized I had spent $85 on a device that pretty much does nothing. So- It doesn't do anything right now. Doesn't do I anything right now. Out. And that's not that different from when it was plugged in and working in my car. So how did you play music in your car before this thing? I plugged my phone in through like five adapters and then like fought with the cassette tape adapter because it was really finicky. It was yeah. a very unelegant system. So I was excited yeah. for some, like a tech company to create a sleek product that was gonna solve my problem. That's what they do best, that's baby. That's what they do best. <laughs> then I got it and I set it up and I realized that's actually not how it works at all. So you'll see on the back there, there's a USB-C port. So the USB-C cord is just for power. It cannot connect to your car. So your phone still has to be connected to your car. So what this actually is, is a second screen that just has audio controls on it. So you don't plug your phone into this no. at all? No. You plug your phone into the car still. And then you connect to this with Bluetooth, like a Bluetooth speaker, and then this controls your music. So this oh no moment was profound. I was like, oh God, I wasted what at the time I did the math equated to 10 hours of labor oh, uh, no. at my job. And I got pretty much nothing out of it. Uh, the only perceivable benefit I can see from this is if you want to have like music on one screen and then like your maps or like Family mm. Guy clips on like the other while yeah. you're driving. Subway Surfer, Subway Family Surfers, Guy. sand cutting, yeah. etc. So nobody really buys the car thing. It's not like the most popular product on earth. And mm. then Spotify takes notice of that and in February of 2024 decides, hey, guys, we were just kidding. It's not $90. Now it's $30, Let's baby. Let's go. What a deal. What a deal. 60% off. I mean, that's incredible. Well, it's also really nice because since you decided that you didn't really even want this, now you can't even sell it for anywhere near the $85 you bought it for. You can only sell it for $30 at most. Exactly. And even if I tried to sell it for $30, I have a feeling <laughs> I would not be able to sell it. And I'm definitely not going to be able to sell it now because of announcement parentheses He's not good made three months after that sale where every car thing that was purchased in this sale when I bought it whenever will no longer work as of December 9th this year as of December 9th 2024 car thing will be discontinued and will stop operating they're gonna flip a switch at their headquarters and generate as much e-waste as possible in like one minute. I like yeah. that the headline or what Spotify said is we're switching gears. <laughs> yeah. Like they're going from like first gear to second gear. But yeah. in this case, they're going from like drive to the car blows up. They did issue refunds. Oh, this okay. is something that I didn't know about when I made my video about this. Uh -huh. So I wanted to bring it up here. If anybody listening has a car thing at home or if you have secretly had a car thing this whole time. Uh, yeah. Well, I have. Uh, I have seven of them, so that'll be good. So yes, you can get your refund, but I will say, refund is maybe a misleading word because what they do is they don't give you your money back to the you know the source of payment. They give you an equivalent amount of Spotify premium months as to what you paid. Okay. So I got six months of Spotify premium paid for and not my money back, which is still nice. It's still good of them. Did you use Spotify premium already? You had to, to use the car oh, thing. Okay, That's of course. the other thing. We've talked a lot about what the Spotify car thing is. We've talked a lot about the ins and outs of this product, what it does, what it's good for. But as we know, light cannot exist without darkness. The sun cannot exist without the moon. So let's talk about what it isn't. Okay. So it is not It is uh, not good. In um, like a e-product sense and like a moral. Yes. In the grand moral scheme of the cosmos, I would put this as like, like neutral evil. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It doesn't 
makes sense to me. Why it exists to begin with. Right. It's also not profitable, uh, which is why they're shutting it down. Spotify went on an earnings call like a while ago and was like, yeah, we simply have not seen the sales numbers justify making this. I can understand them not wanting to make it anymore. Have they said why they are making the ones that already exist not work anymore? They haven't. My thought is that they're just mad. <laughs> they're just <laughs> mad people didn't use it and they're kind of jaded about it. So they're like, you could have had this. You could have had all of this car thing. But they're punishing the people that did yeah. invest in one not the people who didn't. What they should have done is discontinued Spotify for everyone who didn't have a car thing. Yeah, wait, that's actually, write that down. This is Marketing 101 from Spotify. These are the genius marketing strategies that they employ to get this thing out there, get it widely adopted so they can shut it off and make a lot of people upset. And the most important part of marketing is making people upset. Yes, you want, because any press is good press, so if you can get people upset, you're a billionaire. Yeah. That's what it takes. Wait, don't, don't quite. Let me ask you something. <laughs> okay. Back off. Yeah, you pull out a gun. Let me ask you. Picture you are, I think his name is Daniel Eck, the CEO of Spotify. You're okay. Daniel Eck. You're a, a bald man from Scandinavia. I might have to cut all that. I don't know if any of that is true. <laughs> <laughs> have you been making up this entire presentation? No! <laughs> shut, shut up! You're Daniel Eck, you're bald, you're Scandinavian. Yeah. And you're launching a new product. You're creating a brand new piece of hardware. Your company doesn't really do that, but you do own the number one streaming platform for music on earth. How would you choose to market this new product? Yeah, I would probably just advertise to people who use Spotify in Spotify. I hate to tell you this, Danny, uh, you are failing marketing 101 from Spotify. The key to advertising a product is to not put it in your extremely popular app. What you're gonna wanna do is reach out to people via email only. Okay. We know one thing about young people, they check their email and yep. they enjoy doing it. And you're also gonna wanna make the function of the device in all this material extremely vague. You're gonna want the only image you send out in these emails to be this, which is the name of the device, what the device looks like, and then the vaguest sentence you've ever heard. This is the only picture of Spotify car thing that existed before it was available for release. When when this first came out, I thought the name car thing was kind of cheeky. Cause yeah. it's like, it's, yeah, it's a thing that goes in your car. But now that I know this is the only ad that existed for it, and it, it actually doesn't explain what the car thing does. It's a very poorly yeah. named product. My only guess is they were trying to avoid like, uh, false advertisement lawsuit <laughs> when they inevitably shut it down and it actually doesn't do anything. So they couldn't right. call it like a music playing screen because they knew all along they were gonna shut this thing down and then that it wouldn't be that anymore. I do, this is a side note, I literally cannot believe, I don't know who I was in 2022. Because like the fact that like this and a vague couple of emails was enough for me to be like, I, I fucking need <laughs> this, is so crazy to me. Yeah, you can't even tell in this, in the ad how big this device is. And I'll be honest, it, it, the ad, it makes it look huge. Like I'm looking, and maybe it's just because it's on a projector screen. Yeah, I would guess it's like, I'd say, honestly, it's like this big. Yeah, wait. According to Spotify, their decision to delete the car thing was part of our ongoing efforts to streamline our product offerings. That's actually so crazy. I did not even think a company could do that. Can any, can they do that with any product? You buy bread at the store and the bread company comes to your house and takes their bread back and is like, hey, we're, we're streamlining bread. Better luck next time. Anyways, you guys should go check out Jake's video on it as well. It goes much more in depth and he's really funny. But I think it's safe to say that that's gotta be the worst car thing ever, right? Well, in 2019, Tesla announced its first pickup truck, the Cybertruck. When it was announced, Elon Musk made it very clear that they wanted to do something different with the pickup truck genre, creating a more post-apocalyptic looking vehicle that you can drive around in with your cyberpunk goons. We've all got some and they've gotta get to soccer practice. But after years of delays and the truck finally becoming available for much more than Elon Musk initially estimated, owners have now been united with their trucks and it is full of safety problems. My Tesla Cybertruck has three official recalls involving the wiper blade motor, the accelerator pedal, and this little plastic part right here just flying off as you're driving. And I just so happen to have rented one. I tried to remain optimistic when I picked up the Cybertruck, and at first everything seemed fine. It looked like a marvel of engineering, you know? Big, sharp, the windshield wiper was humongous. But other than that, honestly, things seemed pretty normal. Until I started driving the car home. On my way home with the truck, I started to notice that nearly every person who drove past me was staring at me. 
People were gawking, mouths agape. Some even took pictures. I was starting to feel like an animal trapped in some kind of cyber zoo. And things only got worse when I got home and finally got to do some research, only to find that people hate this truck. Owner after owner have been posting videos on social media of people peeing on their trucks in broad daylight. I didn't realize how strongly people felt about this truck, but I was starting to worry that they felt the same about the people on the inside of them. Should I be fearing for my safety? I know damn well that the windows aren't going to protect me. At the very least, I needed to make sure that I was not seen anywhere near this truck. I needed a disguise. I needed to become Neon Vortex, he's the coolest guy And his pins AI, look at him go What a little freak, it's Neon Vortex so I've spent a decent amount of time with the Cybertruck now and I've compiled a little list of pros and cons. So we'll go through that real quick so you can get a quick rundown of everything that's good slash bad about the Cybertruck. Just in case you need like a quick decision. You got your finger on the buy button right now and you just need to know, Neon, should I buy this thing or not? Pros. The interior is actually pretty nice. I like the little ambient lighting that goes around the whole front of the cabin. Actually, I think it's in the back too. There's a little strip. The steering wheel has the turn signals on the wheel, which takes a little while to get used to, but once you are used to it, I think it's actually pretty nice. All of the materials on the inside seem pretty nice. Like the material on the roof liner is like a nice suede kind of thing. But it's pretty spacious on the inside. It has ventilated seats. My butt's so cold. Ah! I changed my mind. This is a con. Okay, cons. There are several things in the car that are too small and shaped oddly. The steering wheel is like tiny. And then the rear view mirror is also tiny. And to make matters worse, while the tonneau cover is closed, which is the little cover on the back of the truck bed, the rear view mirror is completely black because there's a thing in the way. Another con this thing is sharp. If I ran into somebody, I would slice them in half with this car. I also feel like it being made out of stainless steel might be bad for its crash test rating in general. But also the fact that it's so sharp means that opening and closing doors is kind of uncomfortable. Because this car doesn't have any door handles, the way you open it is you have to push a button. Then the door pops open a little bit and you have to kind of reach your hand into the space where the car door has opened and pull it open. But since this car is made out of like weirdly cut stainless steel, it's kind of sharp in there. When you open it. It's an unpleasant feeling on the hand and you never really feel like you're grabbing it in the right place. This truck is wrapped in a matte black color and one of the reasons the owner said he wrapped it is because you basically just grab this thing all over to open it and it, there were fingerprints everywhere. Also changing gears is a pain in the butt. It's actually a little thing that you slide on the screen. If you want to go forward you slide the little truck forward. If you want to go backwards you slide it backwards. Which is not a huge deal if you're just driving from one place to another because how how often do you really change gears in the car anyway? But the second you have to do any kind of three-point turn where you have to change gears more than once, it is such a pain. Bug just landed on my eyeball. One thing that's sort of a pro and a con is the rivet in the accelerator pedal. You see, when Tesla first started shipping the Cybertruck, owners began to realize pretty quickly that after a short time of use, the plate on the pedal could come loose while you're pushing it down all the way, then slide up and get wedged into the car, effectively trapping the accelerator pedal to the floor. Luckily, since this car is electric, the brake pedal can fully override the accelerator pedal. So if you get into this situation, just stay calm, hold down on the brake, and hopefully by the time you realize that, you haven't plowed through like a school field trip or something. Anyway, since this started happening, Tesla has recalled all the Cybertrucks to put rivets in the accelerator pedal. So the rivet is a pro in the sense that now your car will not decide to keep accelerating forever until the end of time, but it is also a con because if it needed this rivet in the first place and Tesla didn't catch this very simple issue before releasing them, what else might they have missed? Ooh, I know actually. Maybe the fact that the frunk chops fingers off. This is the frunk or front trunk of the Cybertruck. And because it is super sharp and can close automatically, it is apparently basically a guillotine. When people with access to Cybertruck started realizing this, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube were all flooded with videos of people testing it out with various fruits and vegetables, and it did not look good for the Cybertruck. Tesla took note of this and actually issued a safety update to the car software fixing the issue. 
kind of. The update led to yet another wave of videos, this time owners more confidently testing the frunk with their own hands. But what a lot of them didn't realize, however, is that the way Tesla fixed this issue is by making it so the first time you try closing the frunk, it closes very lightly. And if it notices any resistance at all, it comes back up, just how you'd want. But if you keep trying to close it after that, Tesla assumes, hey, maybe you've stuffed the frunk with a big bag and you don't care if it closes a little bit harder, you just want the dang frunk closed. Surely someone isn't just standing there slamming the frunk on their hand over and over trying to prove their allegiance to Elon Musk. So when this Tesla nut Jeremy Judkins went to test out the new update, a little scared from how dangerous he'd heard it was before, he started out with his big sturdy forearm. Then he worked his way down to his hand and finally his lone little index finger. Unbeknownst to him, the frunk was getting stronger and stronger every time until... Everybody's been waiting for this, the finger. Without further ado, I feared for my finger for a second, not gonna lie. That's kind of bad. Yeah, so I wasn't gonna test this out of my own hand, but I did try it with my shoe. Okay. I don't think that was enough pressure to slice my fingers off. I'm not gonna test that, but it definitely saw there was something there, recognized it. It thought about it for maybe a second and was like, eh, do I wanna kill this guy? And then it said, ah, all right, what the heck, we'll let you go. So that's nice. All right, driving test. It's time to take this thing out on the open road and kill somebody. One interesting thing right now is it says press to drive and it's showing a picture of the accelerator pedal. So I like that it kind of assumes that as a Cybertruck owner, you have no idea how to drive. The experience of driving a Cybertruck is a little different due to its unique steer by wire mechanism, which means the steering wheel is actually not physically controlling the wheels. It's doing it electronically, which means that it can do things like turn more sharply when you're in a parking lot and less sharply when you're at highway speeds. It's a cool Cool idea in concept, I think, but it definitely took some getting used to. And also, I don't know, like, was this really a problem before? I kind of liked that every time I turned my steering wheel, it turned the car the same amount. First time I took a turn in this thing, actually every subsequent turn I took after that too, I was like, whoa, this thing is a bucking Bronco, man. It's trying to buck me right out of it. This is a wily gal. I've been saying it all day, even alone in the car on the way from the guy's house who owns this thing, I was just saying, yeehaw, this thing is a wild girl. Yeah, I definitely don't like how tiny the steering wheel is and how flat it is on the top. It just feels it feels like wiggling it a little bit sends the car so far in one direction. You really gotta be 10 and two if that analogy even applies to a, a rectangle or a trapezoid. I don't know what this is. I think it's like a hexagon. As a passenger, how is this for you, Jake? Is it? Is it... Uh, I would say I get motion sick in cars. Uh -huh. I normally don't get motion sick in the front seat. Uh, please, 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 please. In this one, I am feeling a little motion sick. No! Sorry. It's a bucking Bronco, you know, <laughs> what a, can I say? She's a wild gal. Imagine putting your, setting your phone here. And you know, sometimes you slam on your brakes and the things in your car go sliding forward. Imagine if something went sliding forward all the way to the front of this dashboard. There's no way that you could ever get that back while you're driving. So if you, if your phone was up there or anything important, you just gotta wait until the end of your drive to get it back. Either that or you have to floor it so fast that it comes flying back and then you just sort of catch it like that. That'd be kind of cool. Kind of feels like I'm in the weirdest Uber ever right now. <laughs> For Jake? <laughs> Where you going, man? The future? Strap in, buddy. It's gonna be a wild ride. And I don't know how to drive. We got a little cyber hungry while driving around and I figured that taking our wild gal through a drive-thru would be a perfect way to get an outside perspective on the truck. Take me to a drive-thru. Command not understood. I'm hungry. This command is not available yet. You're not allowed to be hungry yet in the cyber truck. <laughs> Hello, can I get one uh, butter burger cheeseburger? Anything else? That's it. It's uh, 906. Thank, Thank you. you. I like the cyber truck, by the way. Oh, thanks, man. I'm just renting it, actually, oh, just for the day, yeah. I was thinking about getting one, so I just wanted to see if I liked it or not. Oh, testing it out, right? Yeah. Do you really like it? It looks nice, yeah. Okay, yeah. Some people like it and some people hate it. I don't know yeah. if I really like it or not. Futuristic. Yeah. yeah. Nobody has that. Yeah. It's pretty cool, though. He looked kind of like he was going to laugh at me when I first pulled up. He was nice about it, though. He said he liked it. Do you think he really liked it? 
I may never know whether that guy really liked the Cybertruck or if he was just being polite or worse yet, sarcastic. But while we were sitting in an empty church parking lot enjoying our meal, we were confronted again, but this time in a much stranger way. As we were sitting there minding our own business, a woman pulled up beside us and just stared into the car for a good like 30 seconds. This is very confusing. She's just walking. The windows of the truck are kind of tinted, so I didn't know if she could see us, but I was worried that she was like security for the church or something, and we weren't supposed to be there. So I rolled down the window to ask if everything was okay. And finally, she spoke. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Can I take pictures? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Can you show yeah, yeah, I can show you. So yeah, of course. I'm filming a YouTube video right now. That's why I'm dressed up all weird. So I showed her around the car for a little bit and she took a ton of pictures. Also, I had taken off my wig, so I looked even more insane, but she never questioned it. Then she told us that her grandchildren would love this and they live pretty close by. So she asked how long we'd be there for. We said probably 10 minutes and she said, hmm, 30 minutes. And we said, uh, okay. And then we waited for 30 minutes while she went to go get her grandkids. Yeah, of course. Come on over. They did indeed love the Cybertruck. What do you think? I like it. You like it? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Sick. Yeah? Cool. We went all around it. They asked a ton of questions. Their grandmother kept telling them to wave at the camera. So the back is a truck. It's got a truck bed in the back. And you could like, like make a gaming room. Oh, a gaming room. That's a good idea. I think this kid must watch a lot of Brent Rivera or something, because when he saw the back of the truck, he was like, oh my god, it's so big! You could fit a secret gaming room back here! And then when he saw the frunk, he was like, oh, this is too small. You could not fit a secret gaming room up here. It's like he only thought in terms of secret gaming rooms. It was insane. When I'm 16, uh -huh. I'm gonna buy a Oh, good idea. I like it. That'll be a good first car, huh? Smile. One, two, three. And with that, my time with the Cybertruck had come to an end. It was time to bring it back to the person I rented it from. And wait, what is that? What's going on with those podcast recommendations? And you know what? The music recommendations too. Who owns this car? All right, that's it. I'm pissing on this thing. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join.